Okay, we are in the book of Genesis. <clears throat> and we've been dealing with Abraham in relationship to the firstborn. And we've been, um, uh, we've been looking quite a bit in this 15th chapter. Um, and we're seeing the process uh, that God has in relationship to his firstborn son. We notice a lot of scriptures that tell us, for example, we're familiar with that we should be conformed to the image of Christ. We get that in several different places in the New Testament, but one of them is in uh, Romans chapter 8. And of course, we're not going to turn there, but <clears throat> basically it says that we might be conformed to the image of Christ, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Okay, so there is, uh, in other words, it's not just about being conformed to the image of Christ. Behind it is this, this, this reality of Christ as the firstborn. And um, it is big in the father's heart uh, concerning his son. And so <clears throat> we've been looking at that and we've progressed all the way to, <clears throat> well, let's go ahead and start with uh, verse 9 in Genesis uh, 15. And he said unto him, Take me an heifer of three years old, and a she-goat of three years old, and a ram of three years old, and a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. And he took unto him all these, and divided them in the midst, and laid each piece one against another. But the birds he divided not. <clears throat> so um, this is, uh, we actually want to look here in just a moment in the, uh, next verses <clears throat> but this is God this is the Lord talking to Abraham and this is this is a situation of what you could call confusion here um, but it doesn't appear to be confusion it's only confusion in the heart of Abram a man who wants the seed he wants the life he wants the promise that pertains to life not Christian blessings, if you will. You kind of see what I'm saying there? Life instead of just being a Christian that's blessed, you know. And I realize that this is before. I'm trying to make a point for our lives. Not just Hebrew blessings. And so, um, uh, so, so, so again, Abram has just won this incredible battle with just his servants and he's defeated kings and uh, a great amount of people with those kings and the Lord has, has appeared to him just before this and he said to him that I will be your shield and your exceeding great reward and, um, and it's, it looks like it is a, a high point but Abram makes it a, like, he, he rocks the boat, but in a good way. He makes it a low point. He brings the highness of it down. And he says, that's great. I, I'm thankful for all the things that you want to do and all the blessings that you want to give. But my heart, my heart is on the seed. You remember <clears throat> that that's the exact wording um, in Galatians 3.16 that says he's now unto Abraham and his seed where the promise is made. He saith not unto seeds, plural, as of many, but unto thy seed which seed is Christ. <clears throat> and um, um, it's interesting the the Greek word there, or the word that's used in the New Testament, is the word sperma. It's uh, even more interesting to some of you here that the, the Hebrew word is the word zira. Z-E-R-A represents 
which seed is Christ. It is literally taken from those scriptures there that refer to this is about the seed. This is not just about the coffee house. Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm just troubled. Get used to it, okay, Chris? He knows it. He's, he's so used to it, he's unmoved. <laughs> and <clears throat> And so this, this, the stage was set by God giving Abraham a wonderful victory and then by God declaring some great things that man, you know, uh, I'm going to be your shield and I'm going to be your reward. And Abraham, Abram is focused. He's focused. He, he doesn't fall for it. Can I say it like that? He doesn't fall for it. He's like, that's fine, that's great, that's wonderful. But, but Lord, you have to understand my heart. I want the seed. And when he says that, he is basically saying the same thing Galatians 3.16 says, which seed is Christ. He's not just saying Isaac. And there's so many things that I'll show you in the, when we get into the New Testament on a bunch of this because the New Testament has a lot about these very scriptures and, and all of them pertaining to Abraham. <clears throat> and, 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 and there's a concern. There's a, it's like, it's almost as if Abraham could say, you know, this is not going in the direction that I want. Well, that's the direction God wants. But God should be able to dangle certain things in front of us and us go, no, I want the Lord. Do you understand what I'm saying? He, she should, he should be able to test us and to dangle things. We go, oh, this is God, and he's opening a great door for me, you know, that I could, you know, uh, be so wrapped up in myself, in the ministry that, that I move away from God's heart pertaining to his son. How much greater glory is it if that's dangled? In? You know, and, I, I, and I'm not saying that God can't give you stuff because I believe he was sincere with Abraham and the things that he said. But I am saying that your heart needs to be, your compass, your heart needs to be in tune with that which is eternally what the heart of the Father is in tune with, which is the seed, which is his son and which is his seed in us, Christ in you, the hope of glory, okay? <clears throat> so, and again, not just being conformed, but so that he might be the firstborn. So, um, he begins to ask the questions, and he begins to go, well, how shall I know, and, you know, this and that, and, <clears throat> and so we have, that's where we get verse 9 and 10, and, <clears throat> And, and the father's response is, well, you know, you'll know, you'll know this about the seed as long as you just, just hold on in faith. Just hold on. Just hold on. Just, just tie a knot at the end of the rope and just hold on. Okay. That's, I don't even know what to say to that. <laughs> you know. God says, get me some things to offer up here that represent my son. Get me something that represents the cross. Build me an altar. Bring me that which represents a living uh, being that is going to give itself. All of those sacrifices are going to represent my son together in one heart and in one spirit. And as we said, this, there was no sin offering here. This isn't a sin offering. You know the sin offering. These things are not the sin offering. Well, what does that mean? What does that mean spiritually to us? What does that mean in our reality? It means that we're always looking. You know, we're going, well, you know, um, uh, you know, what did I say wrong? Or did I do something wrong? Or, or um, you know, he's getting me for I, what I know I did wrong. You know what I mean? And so he's, he's making me, you know, offer a sin offering so that 
I need to be right with God. And so if Abram falls down and goes, okay, I'm a sinner, I'm so sorry, you know, and, you know, I mean, even Peter, you know, when, when Jesus walked along and, you know, was calling disciples and stuff, and they weren't catching any fish, and he says, here, cast the net on the other side, and he brings in all this fish, pulls them ashore, Peter falls down at his feet, and he says, I am a, you know, oh, Lord, forgive me, for I am a sinner. Jesus goes, no, just get up and follow me, okay? You know, let's, let's get on with the real deal here, you know. Um, and I'm, again, I'm not trying to put down salvation. I'm trying to say, once you get saved, be saved and go after the Lord, <laughs> you know? <laughs> okay. Uh, there are some denominations that every Sunday, every Sunday, the main thing they do is have an altar call to get the same people saved over and over. Did you do something wrong during the week? That you need to get down here and, you know, get saved. If you're saved, you're saved. And, and I'm not saying once saved, always saved. I've, I've said it many times. I was saved once, and I plan on always being saved. But that's not that doctrine over there. That's my heart is going after Jesus, and I... I think that's probably a good thing to stay saved with. You understand what I'm saying? God, I don't know. How do you talk to <laughs> You're fighting off all these things that people, well, what about this? Well, <clears throat> don't worry. I know everything. I'll tell you. No, I don't know every answer or every question everyone's going to have. <clears throat> so uh, the other thing that proves it's not a sin offering is and he said, in, this is verse 9, and he said unto him, take me, a heifer of three years. Take me. Take this unto me. This is for me, not you. Stop making it all about you. Bring me the Son. Bring me Christ crucified. Bring me reality. Stop trying to figure out how it's going to go. This is how it's going to happen. It's all going to happen by the cross. It's the wisdom of God. It's the power of God. It's the very thing that I want you to, to stay focused on. <clears throat> so in a sense, you could say, because remember all the altars that happened before this? You remember that? There have been a lot of altars. It's almost like God is saying, you know, in those, some of them, the Lord appeared and some didn't. In this one, the Lord definitely has appeared to him. And maybe God is saying to him, uh, Abraham is standing there and, and, and uh, he's looking up at God and he's saying, look, you know, uh, this and that, and I, I want the seed and how am I gonna know and all this kind of stuff. And, he's, and maybe the Lord is just doing this. Look, he's looking to Abraham and he's saying, look, you spent all your journey up to this point making altars. Now you're looking away from the altar and you're coming to me without an altar, without Christ crucified. Build me an altar. <laughs> and there, there, there you're going to find your answer. And remember in verse 8 he said, whereby shall I know? So that's where that's coming from. So by all these sacrifices, um, God has Abram presenting the full picture of Christ crucified. The full picture. This accomplished this. This accomplished this. This, this. It is all that which has pleased the Father, not just sin, or not primarily focused on sin, but what that which pleases the Father. So, verse 11 and 12 now. And when the fowls came down upon the carcasses, Abram drove them away, and when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and lo, and horror of, dar of great darkness fell upon him. All right, so let's just, let's just remember what the fowls represent. I don't think I ever read the scripture. Maybe I did, but... Um, <clears throat> Uh, Mark, we'll look in Mark chapter 3, no, 4, Mark 4. 
And we'll look at verse 3 first. Gospel of Mark 4, verse 3. Hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow, and it came to pass as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, um, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. So Jesus gives the, 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 Jesus explains the parable. And his explanation of that verse is verse 13. And he said unto them, know ye not this parable? Well, we're getting a lot of know ye not lately. I guess he's, he's kind of going, you know, I really thought you, you knew this by now. <laughs> right? And we need to say back, I really thought I did too. <laughs> yeah, and I'm with you, so let's, let's go this time, but for reals, man. <clears throat> All right. Uh, and he said to them, know ye not this parable, and how then will you know all parables? And we're going, I know a lot, I, I understand a lot of the other ones. I just don't understand this one. Okay, come on, somebody say something in light of that. How can we say, I know a lot of them, but I don't, just don't understand this one, when he says, uh, how then will you know all parables if you don't understand this one? You know, it's like, well then what is it that I know on these other people? He's going, I don't know, I don't, I don't listen to you when you talk that language. <laughs> Verse 14, <clears throat> the sower soweth the word. Praise God, huh? Amen. All right. But when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. Okay, so another, one of the other uh, versions of this says the fowls of the air are the, the demons or whatever. Um, <clears throat> so I wrote this, the fowls of the air come back to pick at the flesh of the dead. This is the equivalent of the chief priest spreading false rumors about his death and resurrection, making it sound as if all was just fleshly action instead of truly being God. Our part is to be protector of the sacrifice. All right, we, we went over that part, <clears throat> but now I want to talk about um, this last part here uh, in verse um, 12. And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and lo, and horror of great darkness fell upon him. <clears throat> All right, now rem remember, um, this, is, this is Abraham saying, um, it's good that in the present, you're going to do all this stuff for me, but what I really would like in the present, in, the, in my real walk, and life and understanding is the seed to come forth. So he says, whereby shall I know? How can I know this? So he says, here's these offerings and stuff. Okay. So we go, okay, well, let's offer this stuff up and praise God. Okay, I kind of see Jesus in that. But this is a very real turn. Okay. The first thing when he puts the sacrifice down, kills it, the fowls of the air want to come and take it, okay? Want to come take Christ crucified out of the equation, okay? That's what it says. And when the fowls of the air came down upon their carcass, Abram drove them away. And when the sun was going down, okay, so, He's driving away that which wants to take away Christ crucified as the main focus. Why is he doing that? Why did God set this whole thing up? Why is it like this? It's because he turns and he before this and he's going this direction the way we do. Okay, I want to talk to you because you're big and that's, that's why I'm looking out at you right here. And... You know, and I want to, I want to talk to you, and I want you to explain and make me figure all this out. And he goes, "Okay, take your head, that's looking up here, and let's build an altar right here, and let it represent my son and his death, and um, and 
your focus strays, and it does, it strays on who all's gonna be the firstborn. It, it, it strays majorly, all the way through, almost to the end, do you know that? So, so then, so God says, I, want, I have to deal with this. So he says, build an altar, okay. So now he's got his focus down here. Now, kill the sacrifice, okay. But it's not just the cross. So kill a sacrifice, it's Christ crucified. It's not just Christ. Oh look, we've got a he goat and we got this and turtle doves. And they're all in a pen together, happy. You know, it's not just Jesus of Nazareth. You understand what we're saying? Bring the two together. Bring the altar and the sacrifice together. And so, so he does that. And then the scripture in Mark says Satan. So then the fowls of the air, they start coming down almost immediately. And they're coming down. And who knows what order or how they're swooping down. Who knows? Um, but they're coming down to take the dead flesh. They're coming down to take away Christ crucified. They're coming to take this, this picture away from Abraham's eyes and God has put him in a place that you have to start making a stand for this instead of for just looking up here and asking questions. Amen. Get out of here, get out of here, go, stop. You know, take a stick, whatever. You know, we remember our buzzard beaters? <laughs> it's been a long time ago, wasn't it? <laughs> long time ago, well, I won't explain it to everybody, but. It was way back on Bolivar. <clears throat> um, but what is, what is that? Our, our, uh, our wording back then was a buzzard beater, but the idea was that there's something in you that is fighting off the enemy that is trying to distract you or take you away from Christ and him crucified being God's answer. God is saying, don't look up here. Don't do this. Look right here. Look at the altar. Look at the sacrifice. Now fight for it. Okay. So <clears throat> there he's 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 in a battle. He's in a battle. Does that sound familiar at all? Like Ephesians chapter six? I just almost said chapter five. Well, that would be marriage, and that's a battle. <laughs> chapter six. <laughs> yeah, that was a uh, Freudian slip. <laughs> so, <clears throat> the Lord has to build into us something that will make us stand for his way in this, okay? That will cause us to rise up, something that will cause us that in the midst of darkness that is coming, in the midst of Satan's attack, in the midst of all of that, that we say, I will not be moved from Christ and him crucified. This is it. This is, I will not get distracted by uh, the enemy. I will protect Christ and him crucified in my heart. I will, uh, you know, and with that, I'm, I'm hoping what's going on in Abram's mind is, I see what you're doing, Lord. I see what you're doing. I drifted, you know, even though I did good at the first thing, I drifted. And in my drifting, I took my eyes off the altar. I'd always made an altar, but now I didn't make an altar. And now I'm looking to you and I'm going, just be a God up there that I just kind of look and ask you for stuff and you throw it down to me. It's so much easier. <laughs> you know, I mean, can you imagine the difference? He's standing there going, oh, you know, Lord, I need you to, you know, and he's talking about the first, you know, he's talking about his firstborn, the seed. He's talking about the firstborn son that's, that he wants. But he's left the altar and he's left the, the, the method that all of this comes from. 
comes through Christ and him crucified. The, the, what does he say? The stranger cometh but to kill and destroy and to take away or the whatever. Um, that's what these fouls are trying to do. They're trying to do that. But God is using them. See, we go, okay, this, this is the devil. <laughs> it's the devil. Remember this one? Devil made me do it. <laughs> this is not just the devil. Don't you believe that God can use all things? Yeah. So, Lord, show me you in this. Show me you. So he's, 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 he's being faced with his, the fact that he slipped. I mean, in other words, he's not just going, oh, I should have made an altar, or what is wrong with me? Why can't I be consistent? He didn't go through all of that stuff. You know, it's not like, oh, I, get this. Oh, I hate myself. He's not, that's not what he's wanting. Okay? He's wanting you to go, Okay, I'm with you, and then he sets up the situation. You go, I will defend him. Yeah. See, it's not, that's not defending the truth. You do understand that, don't you? Unless you understand the truth to be him, but that's, it's, a, it's a him. It's Christ and him crucified. It's lamb upon the throne, slain lamb upon the throne that's being defended here. And but it's working something in him. Maybe, and like I said, I'm hoping that he's seeing, you know what, that was really dumb of me to just start engaging God without coming through Christ crucified. That was really dumb. And, and I knew better, but I kind of got off and I really don't want to do that. And so, so these fouls are coming and he's going, so I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to let these things take away the sacrifice from before my eyes. And I'll fight them, and I'll do whatever I have to do so that I may stay with this, and this be my method that is a sweet savor that rises to the Father. I mean, rises. I mean, wherever, however, you know, we think in terms of distance, and I know that that's not the way, but if we think in terms of distance, this rises to the Father, not blah, 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 do this, blah, 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 fix this, do, you, know, you know what I'm saying. I mean, you come through Christ and Him crucified. You come, no, you, you, you know, if you were a Jew back then, you didn't come to God. You didn't just, you know, walk around talking to God. You went to the temple. You know, and the way you worship God, before David, the only way that anyone worshiped God was sacrifices. That was their worship. Remember? Even Abraham learned that when he's with Isaac and he's going up to Moriah to offer him up. And he said to the servants with the horses or whatever, said, you wait here and me and this child will go, me and this son will go worship. Well, he's thinking in terms of altar worship, real worship. All right. <clears throat> so this last part then, uh, verse 12, and when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and lo, and horror of great darkness fell upon him. <clears throat> All right, so I want to tell you this. We'll talk about that tonight, but um, I also want to go back over that, this section later too because I believe that the Lord has shown me a couple of angles of this. So we'll give one angle tonight, and then uh, yeah, I know nothing of my schedule, but when I, someday when I return, I will share, the, excuse me, the other parts. Okay, so darkness. 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 
A deep sleep fell upon Abram, and lo, and horror of great darkness fell upon him. So let's talk about the deep sleep. Anybody know where I'm going to go with that? Yeah, let's go to Genesis 2 and verse 20. So in that battle before he falls into this darkness, in that battle, um, Abraham, Abram has realized that the true battle now, the true battle and the true attack is not against me, it's against the seed, okay? It's against the seed. And so he is not trying to keep them off of him so he can stay focused. He's trying to stay focused by making, driving off whatever, or keep that Christ crucified being the center, the focus, the thing that moves and motivates him. And so many of us are really wrapped up in the fact that we think that the, the whole point um, is that the fowls of the air are, are attacking us. Um, you know, I, I'm sorry, I'm going to use Dennis as an example, but, you know, he's over there and he's bent over the word. He's always digging in. He wants the Lord. He's seeking the Lord. So you, we could say that if we knew for sure it was the fowls of the air, the devil was attacking him, we could say, poor man, the devil is attacking you. Or we could say, the attack is against Christ and him crucified. That's where the attack is. And he's going after Christ and him crucified. He's going after the Lord. And so the fowls of the air are coming down and trying to take that away, steal that away, take his focus off, do physical things that will keep him from being able to go after the Lord in this way. Can you see that? That, that those things can be re very real? I don't know for sure. We don't know for sure. Remember, we just prayed. But, but they can be very real. And, and we go, um, well, I was doing so good before I started seeking the Lord like this. <laughs> Amen. Some of you know exactly what we're talking about. It's like, geez, I didn't have this much problems when I was just a rank sinner or whatever, or just, you know, a, a sweet Christian. But it does happen, but don't think it's against you. It's against you getting Christ crucified because that's where the enemy lost the battle, amen? Not, not just the battle, the war, amen? And if we keep that in mind, then it's not personal. It's like, well, I guess God doesn't want me to get this because he's allowing all these attacks. I think you, you're coming to wrong conclusions. <clears throat> okay, so um, so I, I wrote many flee not just from the fowls of the air, but from the cross and the death it calls for. So, so Abraham could have Abram could have been in this situation and said, "Man, this is you know, I need to get out of this attack." You know what I'm saying? My arms are getting tired. You know, and I and then just so much is going on here, and I need to get out of it. <clears throat> well, I will tell you that first of all, you don't need to get out of it. What you need to do is perse persevere through, because you will have a greater stance for the Lord if you go through it. Um, but second of all, been, if this has been my experience uh, as a minister for over three years and three more, and then seven more after that, uh, is that sometimes people use that as an excuse to quit. They're not running from the fowls of the air. They're running from the cross. They're running from the altar. I mean, Abram's stuck, stuck, you know. But there's that potential, isn't there? There is that potential. We go, well, I, I don't... I don't want to die. Well, you don't have to. It's really not your death anyway. You know, it's not like you're going to literally bleed to death on two pieces of wood, okay? 
you are dead, you're not dying. You're dead with Christ, if you understand what we're, the angle that we're coming from. <clears throat> so, um, uh, in the process of, of the death of the sacrifice, darkness falls. It is a deep sleep, such as Adam had to go through in order to bring forth Eve. So let's go ahead and look in Genesis 2, verse, uh, starting with verse 20 there. And Adam gave names to all the cattle and to the fowls of the air. Wow, he's feeding them. And to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found and help meet for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made a, he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. So <clears throat> you have um, this uh, recognition that there is no... There's no union, there's no um, oneness, as it were. Um, and when you start applying that to Abram, you, you can look at it and go, okay, well, you know, however much he knows the Lord at this point, there is not that union. There is not that reality the, the, of that union. So we say, well, all I got to do is really just pray, and God will make oneness uh, wonderfully clear because I asked. Um, but for Abraham, for Abram to get closer into that reality, he's going to have to go into a deep, dark death for Adam to get that reality. And these are all shadows. He had to go into a deep, dark death. And in that death, and out of that death, God begins to produce more of what union is even about. It is, um, he's, he's dealing with a sacrifice here, probably completely unaware that he's in the process of a sacrifice himself. He's in the process of, of as it were, coming more into the Lord coming more into that oneness, more into a reality that is not just doctrinally sound, not just uh, Christian, therefore I feel good about it, but rather I have to go through a darkness. God's going to do that, but there's a resurrection out of it. There's a resurrection out of it. And that's the beauty. See, we always worry about the death. We always Talking about, and we're always wrestling in ourselves and all that kind of stuff. There's a resurrection, and the and it's Christ. He is the resurrection of it. He said it. I am the resurrection and the uh, and the life. And so <clears throat> you have this uh, deep sleep. Um, and I wrote, but it is not the darkness and horror of the moment that will bring forth the seed or the bride. It is not the darkness of the moment that is going to bring forth the seed or the bride. That darkness will be settled in the garden, if you will, before the cross. Okay, so how does that apply? The true, this is just, uh, this is like uh, preparation to be able to handle Genesis 22, where he offers his son. This is just preparation. He, he needs it. I need it. You need it. You need it. You need, you need to, to, to be open to the Lord's ways and the ways that he leads will many times take you through the valley of shadow of death just like he'll take you by still waters. It's all part of the journey. You can't say, and in fact, I believe that the way that, the, that Psalm 23 was written, he leadeth us beside the still waters, he, he leadeth us in green pastures. All of that is just preparation so that you'll be able to go through the, you know, 
Yeah, the valley of the shadow of death. It's all one, but we make it, oh, I just want to stay here in the green pastures. Or I need, a, I need still waters, you know. Could you just make everything calm for me, you know. And uh, he's going, no, I need you to be with me. For, you know, and he says, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Well, he's also with him, or he wouldn't have gone into the, that valley. He's with him. He's with him. And those are just words, because we say, well, you know, are you with me? Yeah, well, okay, what if it goes bad? Well, not so much. I won't be with you, you know what I mean? I mean, this is, this is being with him in his process. This is, you're still not one, you know? You're not one until you come through that dark, that dark time that, that Adam went through, that Abraham went through, that, that dark valley that's Psalm 23. There, going through all of that, then I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Then, you know, all of the things that, that speak of oneness and of one kind and everything. But <clears throat> we're just making it our journey instead of his journey, you know. So we pick and choose where we want to stay or where we want to go. Lord, could you swing me back around by the green pastures again? Could we take another lap? You know, and he's saying, no, no, you got the point of that. But now, and that in itself is not an answer. The green pastures, the still waters, the valley of the shadow of death, it's all part of a journey that I have to bring you through. And I have to, and, and in that, you need to be with me. Can you go through that <clears throat> without being with him? Yes. It's like Israel wandering in the wilderness. You know, they're wandering around. Do you know what wandering means? <laughs> it means not having any, any direction at all. They were called wilderness wanderers. And they wandered for 40 years. And, you know, you'd think somebody would go, you know what? This is stupid. We, you know, this was an 11 day journey. Remember the scriptures? <laughs> you know, this was on the, supposed to be an 11-day journey. It, it's been 20 years. Are we going to keep doing this for another 20? <laughs> Somebody's going, I think we are. <laughs> At some juncture, you quit wandering, and then you're with the Lord in the, in the process, in, the, uh, the, the, um, uh, in him being the way so that you can find that oneness that, that, you know, we go, okay, well, I want it. I want it so bad that it is clear cut in me so that <clears throat> I, I don't have to function separate. I mean, that is the purpose of oneness. So you, you know, think thoughts over here that are contrary to what he does, you want this mind to be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. He didn't say this brain. He didn't say these thoughts. He didn't say these doctrines. He said, I let this mind be in you. <clears throat> so uh, it is the giving and required sacrifice that God always expects of the firstborn. <clears throat> this is one of the things that you learn is that if Christ is in you, he is in you as the firstborn. Which means what? He is in you as the slaughtered lamb. Which means what? He will always give himself for the Father. He always will. You, you don't want that? Then don't ever pray to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn. Because <laughs> he's going he's gonna to go, okay, I'm the firstborn now. I want to be given to the Father. And you're going to go... No, I thought I would be, you know, be able to do miracles and stuff. <laughs> and he's going, no, it's, it's my way. It's who I am. So let me just, you know, it's time to stop.
So again, I want to uh, reiterate that we will probably make several passes through this, these scriptures here, particularly this dark part, <clears throat> um, because he's going to, he's going to, um, he's going to, as part of what we've been seeing, he has been spiritually implanting certain things in Abraham, spiritually, okay? He will also, uh, well, he has also been literally putting him through certain things, okay? And what we're going to see is that this will all be also prophetically true, okay? So that's, that's why we're going to have to take several laps through here because it, it's like layers of the same thing. All right, well, let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for this one who is the firstborn, the one who is, who is not my will but thine in nature. He doesn't have to try to figure out every circumstance. He doesn't have to weigh anything because if we're weighing it we're usually weighing it in reference to how it's going to affect us and if we really want that but rather it's just not my will but thine be done because of your essence because of your land nature that you placed within us just like at Passover when they ate the lamb not just put its blood on the door but ate it so at the last supper we as it were ate with Jesus that which was his, his body and his life blood that it be that it be living that it be nature we call it father second nature but first nature first nature so we ask you to continue to lead us through the process. Open our eyes and open our hearts. Bring forth your firstborn son out of us. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. All righty.